Se você deseja consultoria de qualidade, vem para o time You got all these shredded obliques, all this stuff. Man, what you be doing, man? Yeah, look, at look at that, man. You got a leg out, and then they all oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, see, uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why. Hello, welcome to another edition of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp, also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. And this is a very special edition of On the Road with Club Shay Shay. We're here at the Mecca, Gold Gym in Venice Beach. Every Mr. Olympia has worked out here. Some of the biggest actors in Hollywood, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Samuel Jackson, even Magic Johnson. And yes, yours truly, Shannon Sharp worked out here in the late 90s. I'm very excited with my special guest today, seven times Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. And he's gonna train me like a bodybuilder. So for one day, Shannon Sharp gets to train like a bodybuilder. Yo. What's up, baby? What up, man? How you and doing? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. You ready? Yes. Are you ready? In the words of Professor Clump, let's get busy. <laughs> oh, you got your gloves on, so you, with the straps. Bro, I'm, re I'm okay, ready to so do this. Okay, so you are ready. All right, so we're gonna do some back and triceps. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start here. We're gonna do some lat pull downs. Okay. With the wide grip. Okay. We're not gonna go crazy wide, but we're gonna be about right here. Okay. I'm gonna bring this down, and I'm gonna keep my chin up the entire time. Okay. A lot of the time, people want to come down and, and hunch over like this. Right. We're going to stay here. OK. And then keep that chin up. And pull it down to the top of our chest. OK. And then the biggest thing is to make sure that we're not straining our neck. You know, right. you get a lot of guys, you know, they're, they're doing all this. Right. And, you know, trying to get that last rep, but we want to okay. be able to control it. And last but not least, we want to make sure that we're pulling not with our hands, not with our biceps and right. our forearms, but with our elbows. So okay. we're thinking, where are my elbows? I, they're up here. Take them I back. Just wanna, I just want to pull them down. OK. Gotcha. Pulling my elbows down. The further they can go, the better the squeeze is going to be okay. on these lats. OK. And it's going to eliminate a lot of the soreness that you're going to have here. Your forearm. Yeah, because everybody wants to grip everything so right. much because they look at the weight and they're like, I got to have it. Cool. Good, good. And then we want to slow it down just a little bit. There we go. So we're going to keep that chin up. And we're going to hold for like a good two count. One, two. We're going to have more time under tension. And see, as you keep your chin up higher, you're going to be able to get more air, too. The problem is when people keep their chin low, it's because of the fact that it gets heavy. Right. So the common mistake you see a lot of people at the gym, they do this. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. We're seeing them. They're allowing that weight to control them right. instead of them controlling the weight. Okay. And normally it's an ego thing. I mean, we come into the mecca of bodybuilding, goes Jim Venice. You see all the pictures of Mr. Olympia, all this other stuff. You see they everybody that, They've been doing that at boutique gyms also. Yeah. <laughs> they've been watching those videos. They, right. They're hopped up on the supplements. They've been listening to the crazy music. And yeah, they're, they're with it, but they're not realizing they need to focus on some technique. Right. They want to, we want to focus on the tempo, so we're not going super fast. Right. Because this is going to carry momentum, right? Okay. And then we want more time under tension. A lot of people say, well, why would I do underhand lat pull downs? Because we want to work on the sweeping of the lats. Okay. The lats can actually insert very, very low. Right. But you see a lot of guys, they only have it very up top. Hot, hot, yes. Very high. Yes. And in bodybuilding, we want it to start so low. So right. it's just, it looks like Give a cobra. cobra. Yeah, the cobra. And you know this, working yeah. with the great Lee Haney. Yes. You know, he had a beautiful yes. back. So we're going to come here. Okay. And we can hold. We'll get into the heavier stuff. Right. But now we're warmed up. Right. See? The problem I used to have was I was so excited to get into the heaviest stuff right, right away. Right, yes, yes. And then I had to realize, like, even when I played 
basketball in college, we always had warm ups. Warm ups, yes. Why not do that in lifting? Do you train with gloves? I have, I have in my career, yeah. You know, a lot of people try to discourage it. Yes. And I and I thought, no. because you, you got calluses. <laughs> and I like touching my girl's booty. Ex exactly. Nice. Beautiful. And so like everything back here, yep, right there. All the way down in there now. Awesome. Isn't it easier for someone like yourself that's a little bit more compact to develop that lower? You can say I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> because if you look at my structure compared to your yeah. structure, I'm a little taller, of so course. my lats are not gonna go quite as low Maybe as your You're a specimen, we all know that. So I actually think that if we were to do, let's say, 12 weeks of certain type of training, right. specifically geared toward the sweeping of the lats, right. I guarantee you would see improvement. Right. You know, as a football player, you're not really focusing on that. You're focusing on the no. functional. Yeah, I was going to say, bend. so like, what was like one of the lifts that you guys had to have for back? I mean, we did some probably one arm row. Yes. That was dumbbell row. That was okay. really the only thing that we did for back. Got it. It was about, you know, we did bench press, we did squat, we did leg press. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're trying to get power. We're trying yeah, to you get want explosive. Power. Yes. We're trying to get speed. Yeah. And the back ain't going to help with speed. No. I don't do curls. Yes. Because my thing was to push people off me. There I wasn't go. trying to pull nobody no. to me. Yeah. My girl didn't weigh that much, so I just like, <laughs> she, she was easy for me to pull to. Dudes, I'm trying to get, get you off me. Right, so yeah. everything was about yeah. the push. 100%. Actually, with that, let's go over here and do some tricep real okay. quick. You can always do hand on hip or you can come a little further out here, grab this, right. and all we're gonna do is extend out here. We're gonna try to keep it a little close. Right. If we come out here, we don't feel it as much. Right. If we come right here, we can go further out. Okay. All right. So I wanna, yep, there we go. Right there. And I wanna make sure I'm getting a good one count okay. on here so I can actually feel okay. what I'm doing. And then what that's doing is actually stimulating, you know, that mind-muscle right. connection? Right. Therefore, I'm not feeling in my joints or anything like that. And if I am, I know where to adjust. How heavy yeah. are you going? 65, 75, yeah. 80? It also depends on the gym that I'm going to. Right. Because you and I both know this may not be our home gym. Right. And 60 pounds on another type of machine right. Right. feels totally different. Right. Most gyms are not going to go. You're not going to be able to do cable with 297. I mean, they got a lap pull down. This lap pull down goes to almost 700 pounds. Exactly. So there's so no, it, gym yeah, no gym that's going to other than this gym. Right. So I always tell people, like, make sure. Feel it out first. Feel it out. When you're doing this, is your goal always to stimulate, not annihilate? Correct. Because a lot of times yeah. people come in and they try to, ah, oh, ah. and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it, it's hilarious when we see people and they're doing, let's say, bicep curls. Right. And you almost want to ask them, are you doing shoulders or back? Because they're going like this. Right. They damn near hitting themselves right. in the face doing right. it because they're trying to do all that. Right. Why am I doing that? Right. Because it's too heavy and I refuse to address everything else accordingly because I am afraid that people think that I'm training like a wuss because I'm only starting with this. Right. Well, Mr. Olympia had to start somewhere. Right. And if I can master 50 pounds, then I'm gonna go to 60. So we said, yep, and you're, and obviously you're taller, so maybe take a little half step toward me, yep, and then keep that close, yep, and now extend as far as out, yep, cool. Hell, if I ain't no, I've been training wrong my damn self. I, you just haven't been training with a seven time lately. I have yeah. not. I have not. <laughs> Effing with you, Phil, I'm a mess around. I won't be able to fit in my clothes. You guys, like, when you gain weight, you can just wear, like, shorts and yeah. wear ba baggy. I don't really get that. You don't can't get, get that. that. No, I, don't, no, I don't get that. No, you can't do that. So we're going to come over here and then do this. <laughs> if anything, we're going to make sure that they, they, they let out your jacket just a little bit because yeah. the last going to get a little bit bigger. Okay. So I can actually come a little lower okay. right here and then extend out. Okay. At first I had it really tucked in like right. this and I was coming out here. Right. I can come a little lower. Okay. Drop my elbow down and then sweep. Right there. How long does a typical workout take you to complete? Uh, I want to make sure I can do it in 75 minutes. That means I'm not over here, you know. But you're not bull jabbing around. You that's got what I'm saying. I'm on. in there. I'm locked yeah, in. Right. I like to gamify things. I want to make sure that if there's not a clock up there, I'm using my watch. I'm, right. I'm saying, okay, if I say it's 90 seconds resting period, right. that's what that means. Okay. Then try to bring that out just a little bit more. Yep. Right there. Yep. Yes. 
See, before you were stopping a little short, now, yeah, okay. just like that. And what's crazy about you, Shannon, I can actually see your tricep, your horseshoe through your shirt, so that's good. <laughs> I've been working. I know you I have. I don't know if I've been working quite as hard as it, but I'm gonna I'm try, I'm gonna train. You've been I mean, once you, uh, you gave an insight, because I definitely don't train in, in a tempo method. And that's the biggest thing too, as we age, you know, we're wanting to make sure that we're getting quality reps. If I could go back to my 25 year old self, I'd have been like, okay, let's slow this down. I know testosterone high, right. you excited and everything, but let's slow this thing down and really hone in on the little things, just like you would playing football or whatever. Look, if you go online and people say, man, I see Phil, man, like it looked like he could, he always has more left in the tank. Like he could, he could lift heavier. I can, but the goal is not the, to live heavier. This is not, Look, my heaviest lift ever was uh, 505 on the bench for a single. That's enough. Right. I can brag about that till I die. You right, know what right, I mean? Correct. Uh, squat the same. I, you know, I'm in that 1500 club. I've done it all. Right. I've done that. But I don't have to do that every day. Get a good stretch right here. This is as far as we're going to go to get right. a good stretch. And then as I'm pulling, See, I can lean forward just to get a good stretch. Come here, be at 90 degrees. But I'm pulling right here with, and what? Right. With my elbows. Okay. And I won't stop until I know right here. I'm not gonna stop until I feel those lats. Right. Okay, I'm not just gonna come here and do all this. I'm gonna come here, I feel that stretch in the lats, which right. is good, and I'm gonna squeeze. All right, Shannon, incline bench. I lowered it a little bit. You're familiar with skull crushers, yes. of course. But we're gonna do dumbbells. Okay. Instead of pressing here, we're gonna actually gonna press up, and I wanna demonstrate that. Right. It's to alleviate all of this Elbow pain right here. here. All right. So a lot, like I said, a lot of people come here right. when they're doing them right here. We wanna go up and back. Oh, okay. See that? Yes. And if I want to, I can change it up and go here. I can have a little fun with it. Okay. Okay. So how much dumbbell did you use as opposed to cable? Oh gosh, I used, uh, I very rarely use cable. It was usually for touch up work. Right. At the very end of a workout. Okay. So you're gonna come, I'm gonna hold your hands okay. right here. And you're gonna come here. So instead of, instead of going forward right. like that, you're just pushing up and back. Yep. And you see, like, that's all engaged right there. Yep. And then have these next two go a little lower right here. Yep, there you go. And then we're going to keep them right here. Yep, right there. There you go. I'm definitely going to have to incorporate that. The last three days leading up to the show, the day of the show. What are you eating? What's the prep? Ooh, those last three days, I ain't gonna lie. The it's hell. hell. It's hell. Because the minute you start taking water out while still having to eat the same amount of food, your mind does some tricks, man. Your mind is saying uncle. It's tapping out. Right. And that's where a lot of bodybuilders miss their peak because right. they do reach for that water and they say, oh, I'll just use a diuretic to get it out. Right. And then they don't look right. I go off of biorhythms, right? So what does that mean? What time am I gonna be on stage, theoretically? Right. 8.30, 9 o'clock. I'm gonna start training at 8.30, 9 o'clock. Right. Every night for three, four months. That way, I know how my body's gonna look. look. The best time is in the morning yes. when you wake up. Yeah, you, you look great. Ooh, you look good. <laughs> when I get up in the morning, yeah. I get up in the morning, I run, to, I run to the ground like, oh, that looking good. Crazy. I feel, good. I feel good. like I'm good. I feel good. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So how long can you sustain that while eating, while drinking water? Nah, oh, man. It goes away. Yeah. But soon as I eat and drink some water, yeah. I'm like, what happened? Where'd it go? I didn't eat that much. Right. But what if I can train you so that at 12, 14 hours later, you still hold that? Maybe it's a little blur. Right. 
we get rid of more fat. Right. We get rid of more excessive water. I taught my body how to do that. Right. So if I took a picture at five in the morning, I should be able to take a picture at 5 p.m. and as much as not change. Right. Once I figure that part out, I'm like, oh, these guys are in trouble. Yeah. Man, you got me over here giving out all the secrets. <laughs> I trained well, you. Like, you, are you coming back? You uh, coming? Yeah, we, okay, maybe, okay, maybe okay, not. Okay, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, okay, commenta okay, I'm okay, commentating okay, this year, okay. but you know what? You always leave you never, a little bit you, of room. You leave a room. Hey, okay, okay. You never know. They might drop me a bag. Huh? Right, okay. You know, like, hey. <laughs> they say, hey. You don't really do a whole lot of posting before the actual show. No. You know how LeBron says zero dark 30 yeah. time? I do the same thing. Right. Because why do I need to show you anything? But you know I'm you in the gym. But you're going to see it. Right. I always wanted to keep covered up. Yeah. Does he? That's why I stay. Sleeve. Yeah. Your boys, they covered up. But they know. Oh, everybody knows. They you. know. Everybody knows. You. you gave us a preview. Yeah, you know. That was a sample. That was this too. this yeah. is advanced <laughs> now. You know, and now that I've been working with you in like time under tension and the eccentric motions, oh, I'm going to be straight. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be straight. I ain't going to put on no sides, but I'm going to carve this thing up. We're going to check back, you know, next year in 2023 when you get ready for the Olympics. You know, <laughs> I'm going to get ready for something. Oh. oh, I'll be 55. That's what I'm getting ready for. Double I got, nickel. Double, I got to be. You I got, got to be tight. Hey, you were telling me about this mirror. I kind of like this mirror. See? See? <laughs> so you get this all this natural lighting. Look at that. So you got, so what you got right there, you got your serratus. You got all these shredded obliques, all this stuff. Man, what you be doing, man? Yeah, look, at this. look at that, man. You got a leg out. Look, you got a leg out. <laughs> so you got that. I like okay. it. That ain't bad. Shannon, I don't know, man. I could get you in the comp. I got, I got an amateur show in Texas. <laughs> what you... So, so, all right, so no, 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 go ahead, go ahead, and I'm gonna help you. Okay, so right now, you're doing this, are you doing a back last spread or back double by? Which one are you gonna do? Uh, I'm doing double okay. by. Okay, oh, double by, okay. All right, boom. So you're gonna have that leg back. Okay. But you gotta spike that calf. Then yes. you gotta take that, then you gotta have that spike. hamstring. Okay. You gotta have sit that. Sit down on it. You gotta okay. sit down on it a little bit. You gotta okay. squeeze your glutes. Okay. Make sure that you're doing that, okay? okay. And then that's the line that we want, right? Okay. We want the separation. See how the calf got right yes. there? You had it like that. We want okay. it like this, okay? So we got to come a little higher up a little bit. There, there, there you go, just like that. The back shots are the worst because there's so much that go on. Right. You got to pose everything. Yeah. And you can't see it. So it's all about repetition and feel. So you kind of come here, flexing that. Then you're going to come here. You bring these elbows back just like what we're doing over there. Right. You're going to come here. And then you're going to come down. And then watch how I roll these shoulders and last. Oh, okay. And then I can come here and then pump them like that and set it. If I really want to make it accentuate, I'm going to lift my chest up. Watch, watch in the mirror. Okay. And that's what we do. When you start seeing people do it and they start shaking, yes. it's because their muscles are just not used to it. Right. And they need so much repetition. So when you see people sweating on stage and yes. stuff like that, because they haven't practiced enough. Right. So you have to go through all so these when you practice, So when you practice in the fund of lights as if you would like on the stage, yeah. correct? So what I would do after I train every day, I get in the mirror or I set up a tripod, I, I film myself. Right. And I start doing the quarter turn. So I start here, here, and then I quarter turn the whole thing, making sure that they can see everything just like that. But let me ask you a question. So when you quarter turn, are you flat or are you? So you're flat. So th so the judges don't like it when you do that, okay. even in the pros. So they so they want you here. There you go. And then I want and then you flex this. There you go. See how you turn that shoulder in? So you turn that shoulder in like that, and then you have that abs already tight. And then take a moment, put your chest up a little bit. There you go. And then you're gonna look that way. Okay. And that's how you do a quarter turn right there, all right? And then when you're facing the, and then the, oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh, see, uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with that, I'm done with that, I'm done. You already did that. But one of the other poses that we'll do since I got this on, okay. is that we'll do like a side chest. So we come here, and then what I like to do is I, if I'm doing it this way, okay. I'm gonna use this foot and I'm gonna stand with that toe, that big toe right here, right. in the middle, right here, okay? Okay. So then move that foot a little bit up, this one, right there, right there. Okay. Now I'm gonna sit a little bit, back, 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 and that's when you can see okay. the hamstring hang a little bit. Okay. We gonna work on them okay. hamstrings, yeah, but yeah. you got it, okay? So we're gonna do that. I got runner's hamstring. <laughs> exactly. So then you come here. Okay. 
all right? And we bend down, and then right there, all right? And then if we want, like old, like Vince Taylor used to do, you yeah. come here, and then it come down like that. And that's why working the upper pecs right. on side shots is so important. Right. So the quarter turns and all these other mandatory poses are to show your strengths, but also figure out the weaknesses. Weakness. Even like a quarter turn, you can see, okay, oh, he's about tricep. Right. Oh, he's got the separation from front delt to yeah, side delt. delt. Right. Okay, he, oh, his chest is striated. Straight yeah. Oh, he's got all that going on. Yeah. Then he comes on this side. Let's see on this side. Oh, it looks almost identical. Right. So we could tell that there's symmetry there. All right. So then with the side chest, we're coming here. Some guys like to keep it up right here. Yeah. But yeah. I've noticed over the time, Franco used to do that. And he, instead of a side like Arnold, this is how Arnold was. Arnold kept his high. And then Franco would come and then front chest. You know, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of cheating. Right. But if the judges reward it, it is what it is. Right. One of my favorite poses was always the back poses, but then also... Most muscular? Most, most muscular, man. I mean, come on. You come in there, and you and you can hit this one right here, and you can hit this one right here, you can hit this one right here, and then you can come in here and do that one. And what I love about this, and you did this a lot. Yeah. You score a touchdown, yeah. you doing this. Yeah. LeBron James, he dunking on somebody, he doing this. Where y'all learned this from? Come on. Come on. And that's why I love it. When we're doing all like this stuff, we're seeing all this stuff. Yeah. Someone flexing yeah. on somebody, yeah. it's like you flexing on them. Bam. Yeah. That most muscular, that is a very powerful pose. Yeah. They call that pose out, and that's when the crowd go crazy. Yeah. Do you live for the pose down when it says, oh my God. The pose down for me is to remind these guys that it's over. It's over. I was a Tom Brady of bodybuilding, man. They didn't want me to win no more. Right. They get tired of seeing the same, and it was seven consecutive years. Yes. When I lost, going for number eight in 2018, it did hurt. Um, Shaq called, he was there. Right. He called me, he was with Rock. Yeah. He gave me a great amount of encouragement. Dave Batista called, Isaiah Washington called. I had some really good brothers, man, that, that hit me up, that don't compete. Right. And I was very thankful for that. They shared a story of their own mm -hmm. issues and, right. and how things didn't go their way, and, and I needed that. But, as far as like the bodybuilding community, yeah, very few people. But I don't blame them because how do you tell a person of my legacy like how to feel? Right. So I don't blame nobody. I don't blame right. anyone. Like they probably were trying to digest it too. Like right. I never thought you would lose, bro. Bill, thanks for the workout. I really appreciate that. I mean, I've heard of football players becoming professional bodybuilders, police officers, former police officers becoming bodybuilders, but basketball players. <laughs> How, why do you want to become a professional bodybuilder? Um, primarily because I needed a new challenge. Right. And I had to acknowledge at some point in time in playing basketball in college, <laughs> not, getting the, got, not getting the burn that I wanted, right. that uh, those hoop dreams are gonna come to an end pretty soon. Right. And fortunately, I had a friend that was already competing amateur, you right. know, and uh, was able to go to a couple competitions. Next thing you know, I have a guest poser there saying I should try it. Right. So I say, okay, what the heck? What's the worst thing that can happen if I try to do bodybuilding? I'm right. gonna get in shape? Right. Cool, I'm just gonna get in shape. Right. And I thought, well, maybe, I can get in one of these men's health magazines and stuff. Because I thought, I was being real, man. Light skin, green eyes with a little bit of muscles. <laughs> I might be able to make it work. I'll make, I'll make, make I a living out there. Yeah, so um, I started doing it. And next thing you know, I was very blessed to make it a career. You're from Seattle. You grew up with Jamal Crawford, Nate Burleson, Corey Dillon, yes. Jason Terry. You got a, a basketball scholarship to the University of Denver. Yep. So obviously, and I tell people this all the time, if you play high school sport, you have aspirations normally of going to college. And if you play college sport, you probably want to play professional sports. Correct. When did you realize that, you know what? I think given my height and given the situation, I don't really think I'm going to be able to play in the NBA. The sophomore year. Sophomore year, I started seeing that transition happen. We had a couple new guys come in, a couple Juco transfers, this and that. And I'm like, this, and then the writing's on the wall with the playing time. Right. When your minutes go down and your production isn't the same and no, not getting the game reps, right. the coach is making the decision. Right. And uh, as much as I want to fight that and, and work harder and ask more questions of, Coach, what do I need to do? Right. I was that guy. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? And I would do it and still didn't work out. 
I had to recognize that this is the team, not Phil Heath's, you know, team. Right. And uh, I will say our coach did get fired at junior year, so I was like, well, maybe he was wrong. Right. Maybe I should have played. Right. But at that point, new coaching staff come in my senior year, and what helped me make the transition was that coach was brutally honest. Right. He said, you know what, I don't know what happened, but if it were me at your freshman year, you would have already been doing X, Y, Z for me. Right. But what I need you to do is be a leader to these younger people. You're a senior, you are groomed, you understand film, help me out, right. and I will make sure that you graduate, whether it's four years, five years, you want to be a grad assistant, I'll help you get a coaching gig. And I thought, okay, what's your alternative? Well, he said, I'll make your life hell. I said, I'm choosing option one. So <laughs> let's go make that happen. And, I'll be honest, you know, comparing myself to people like Jamal, you know, you know, other guys with Jet and everybody right. else, that was tough. Right. Seeing the because millions of dollars see, you and see, stuff You see and all them that. make it, you played against them. Yeah, and like, you think, well, why not me? Right. And uh, I didn't let my height be something because I thought, well, I had a 40-inch vertical. I, right. was, I was an athlete. Right. But I had to be real. I had to be real. And, and uh, that, that, that was very depressing at one moment, but, you know, God makes no mistakes, man. Right. So I thought, well, let's just see what happens if I close that door. Because it's definitely going to close. Right. Let's accept it and move on. Right. Like I said, bodybuilding opened up. And, man, I, trust me, uh, I didn't know I was going to make a profession out of it going in. I just knew that it was going to help me deal with the depression that I had not making it to the league. Right. Or, or let alone going overseas. Right. And, uh, I, I, like I said, I had to make a, a conscious effort of saying, What's the best case scenario for me? That would have been, okay, Phil, you're going to go play ball overseas for, let's, let's say, five years. Right. Now I'm 27 years old, 28 years old with no job experience. Why did I get these two degrees for? Right. Now the people that I graduated college with are going to be my boss. Right. When I should, no, I, no. There's more right. millionaires at Microsoft than there are, you know, in the NBA right. at the time. And uh, that was when the G League was going on. I said, no, nah, this ain't going to work, man. Right. This, this ain't going to work. You were a shooting guard. Who would you compare your game to? D Fish. Derek Fisher. Okay. All my homies would be like, that's D Fish right there. Right. Man. Like uh, playing with a with a pro in high school with Jamal. Of course he's getting them off of you. And I'd be left wide open. I knocked down the jumper because I knew I wouldn't get that ball back if I did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so I made sure that I, I could protect the ball. I was a really good defender. I was very strong. I could pass well. And I could get defenders off of me with the, you know, my, my handle was good. It wasn't spectacular, but it was good enough to not turn the ball over and run right. the offense. And I, I wasn't never a liability on defense. Right. So that's what, where my game was. You're the only ex-basketball player that I know that turned bodybuilder, professional bodybuilder. Do you think any other basketball players, who do you think would make a great bodybuilder? Man, Nate Robinson would have been dope. When he was, yeah, that would have been easy for him. Right. Current guys, Dame Dollar could do it, I think. Um... You know, some of the guys are too tall, I believe. You know, majority of them are too yeah, tall. Yeah, they didn't have to be 400 majority pounds. Of, yeah, but, majority of them are too tall. But I would say, you know, I always thought, like, back when Tony Allen was playing, he was, yeah. a, he was a specimen that could right. do it. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, there were some guys back in the day, like, you know, Kevin Willis and Dave Robson, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. the shoulders and yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, like, well Cam still works out like that. Uh, he's in Atlanta. You know, Shaq is really strong. I don't know. I don't think Shaq could be a bodybuilder. He's just too tall. Yeah. But he's strong. He could put, easily put muscle on. Yep. You hear these stories about Wilt Chamberlain and about how strong he was. We know he was a great athlete. Yes. He ran track in college. He high jumped. He long jumped. He ran the open four. Do you think he – well, he's too tall to be a bodybuilder. But what have you heard about Wilt? Because I think Wilt – actually, as a matter of fact, before he passed, I was out here, and I saw him pass right by this very street that the Gold Gym's on and uh, threw my hand up. He waved back. Yeah. But – do you think guys like that, because I, I, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, okay, if you're a professional athlete, obviously you got discipline. Yes. Obviously you know what sacrifice. Two of the major things that you have to have to be a professional bodybuilder. 100%. Um, Will would have been dope just to see. I, I would have loved to just <laughs> see him try because, you know, me growing up watching him in those Conan movies. Right. I mean, you know, he was still built. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, you know, back to other athletes, maybe not in basketball, but like a... What about football player? What oh, football player do you think Saquon all day. Saquon? Okay. Saquon can easily do it. Okay. Those legs that everybody fawns over and stuff, okay. I mean... He, what about Adrian Peterson? For sure. Le'Veon Bell, no question. DK. Come on. <laughs> He's the only tall dude that could probably easily do it. Right. Like, with ease. Right. Uh, you know, 
obviously I come from the era like growing up seeing a Deion Sanders. Right. He could have done it for sure. Bo Jackson for sure. Could yeah, Bo. Oh. Herschel, easy. I mean, come on, man. You. Because <laughs> now they have different categories right. now. So like where you may not do open class bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, I want to do, I wanna do the, with the board shorts. Or I want to do the board shorts. You could, you could do that. Yeah, I want to do Shannon, you could shorts. actually, you could do that now. I could do the board shorts. Let me do, do I, I can do the board shorts. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> uh, do you train? Do you train athletes? Do you want to get in that, you know, train for, train other professional athletes, like basketball players, football players? Uh, the, the issue I have with that is the, the ego with their crew. It's their crew that want to dictate what they do. Right. Um, and I don't want to disrupt anything they have going on. Now, I have some friends in, you know, in NFL, MLB, this and that, that have DM'd me, hey, what do you think of this, this, and this? I'm there for them. Right. You know, um, one of my really good friends is Tim Grover. We talk. Right. Yeah. We talk to some of his clients as well. Yes. Um, would I want to do that? Uh, I believe the person has to be extremely coachable and I'm not saying this for, from an egotistical standpoint. They would have to come to me. Right. Uh, I'm a man of service. Right. So if they said, hey, Phil, like, this is what I'm thinking, or if they, let's say they're getting ready for a photo shoot for a, a magazine, you know, right. digital magazine or something. Right. This is what I've been told. What do you think? Where can I meet you? Fine. I got you. Um, but, yeah, to say that's what I'm going to do now, no. Because the it, egos, man, like I'm going to deal with some egos. Right. And I don't know how they're going to accept the diet right. as well. And then not partying anymore. Right. Because, look, we already know the stuff that you guys talk about on your show. Mm -hmm. These guys go out. And right. it's hard. I, you know, I've talked to different rappers and entertainers yeah. and stuff. I'll give them the diet. I tell them to train. But then I see on the IG, they're out 3, 4 in the morning. Right. So it's a waste of my time. And I don't like wasting my time. Right. Yeah. But I, I think it's, it would be really hard for you, someone that's so focused, and to, because people want instant gratification. They want you give them a program, you train them, and in two weeks, well, I don't, I don't see any difference. Right, and then they got their friends telling them, oh, you don't need that, you do this. And I'm like, really? It so, takes time, brother. Like, right. let, let's, let's, let's think about this. But what I will say is more athletes who are now retired have come forward right. because they want to maintain. Right. And they recognize that, hey, I played football, I played baseball, I'm interested in just getting healthier. This is what I heard. What do you think? And I'm like, yeah, I can be your consultant now. Right. Yeah. How difficult is it to now that you're not competing competitively for you to maintain your weight, maintain like, okay, he was a bodybuilder. I, I, can, I can see, even though he's not competing, I can see that he was a bodybuilder. Yeah. So because you see a lot of athletes, football players, off, basketball yeah. players, and they just... That's a lack of discipline, I think. I think they also put their identity in just that sport. Right. For me, yeah, I won seven Mr. Olympia titles. I'm, I'm in my era. I'm definitely the GOAT in my era. Right. I know that. But that's not who Phil Heath is. Right. right? That's not going to read on my headstone one day. Right. right. It's going to read just my name. Right. And what my contributions are to the world. My biggest thing is I always want to live a healthy lifestyle. Right. I want to. I always would say I want to be the Black Jack Lane. I right. want to be able to do it all. Right. I want to show that just like I pivoted from basketball to bodybuilding, I should be able to lose weight, which I did. I lost 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. I'm like 245, 255. That I stay, and that's my comfort right, right now. Um, if I wanted to do another show, I could easily blow up, back up to 275, and then come back down if I want to. Right. If I want to run a 5K, that's one of my goals. I want to really? be able, Oh, I want to be able to do it. By the time I turn 50 years old, I'm 42 now. Right. I want to be able to say, I want to be able to run a 5K. I want to be able to do different stuff. There's different feats of strength that I want to exhibit to show that I can do, I'm an athlete for the rest of my life. You know what, I was just thinking, um, the guy that would probably be the best bodybuilder of them all, of all the guys we mentioned, Tio. <laughs> I, I, I think Tio, I think Tio has the best gifts. I think so too. And I know, given the right motivation, he would do the work. Yeah. Oh yeah, he very, he's very motivated. Very motivated, chip on the shoulder. Yeah. He'll do it. Yep. You know, um, he's definitely one. Of, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Sorry. About, yeah, sorry about that, T.O., but yeah. What about boxing? Mike Tyson, Deontay Wilder. I think Deontay Wilder has a. Deontay Wilder would have, but so long. Though. He is. Long. Yeah. Tyson for sure, easily. Yeah. Um, Spence, maybe. Roy. Roy. Hagler, easily. Hagler for sure. He was one of my yeah. favorites. Uh, because he was just thick, you right. know. You know um, I'm trying to think of some other cats, man. Like, it's, that's tough because 
you don't have to be shredded to to box. Right. You know? um, but I for Evander. Yes. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Holder, yeah. Because he had those round delts. Yeah. And, I mean, he was, whew, and he, it, you could tell that he was strong. Yes. You could tell he was strong. Yeah, he worked out. I mean, Lee, tra Lee, Lee Haney trained him for a while, and then he got too muscle bound and he needed to, to get away from that type of training. Yeah. Who's your favorite team? When you watch sport football, who's your favorite football team? Um, you know, it just happened this last week with Seattle and Denver, man. Right. I, I'm from Seattle. I got to root for both. I'm fortunate that they're not playing in the same, you know, conference. We used so to play in the same division. I know. <laughs> and being from Seattle, watching our butts get whooped every time. I mean, we didn't have a spot at right. all. So it was great. To, for me, it was great to move to Colorado and see you win a Super Bowl and then still live there and see another Super Bowl and then see Seattle win one. I'm happy. Those are my teams. Like, I, I always tell myself, you're born in one, you resided in one. You can have two. Right. As long as they're not in the same conference, right. I can pick them. Right. But I've met so many of these athletes yeah. from different teams. I root for the individuals nonstop. Right. You know, I just want them to, uh, I want them all to win. I, I truly do. Right. And I want them to do it the right way and uh, stay healthy as much as they can. Right. You know, we want them to, to take care of their bodies, especially the off season. Right. You know, more and less time on the social media and stuff. Right. Yeah. What about basketball? Who's your team? Who's your player? Oh, my gosh. All time or just now? Now. Now? Oh, now. That's tough, man, because I love LeBron, man. He's dope. I've always been a Laker fan, even though growing up in Seattle. But they, they took my team away, so, right. you know, they took my team away. I'd say LeBron, but then also I, I like Dame Dollar, man. Yeah. He's a dog, bro. He is. Like, and he's sticking with Portland. Like, that's yeah. the closest team from my hometown that right. I can rock with. You know, I had a season ticket for the Nuggets for the years, so I got to see a lot of good players. Right. Um, but I respect the champions. I respect, you know, guys like Greek Freak, you know, KD, LeBron. These are guys that, I mean, God-given talent. Steph Curry, for sure. Yes. I mean, I've been fortunate to see his game evolve because I'm old enough to say it. He's not a defensive liability. He shows so much confidence. And, right. in fact, he's made more people – believe in themselves for shooting that jump shot as far as he can. Right. So, I mean, those are like the guys that I that I pay to watch. Right. Yeah. Your all-time favorite player is who? Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> all-time. I mean, for me, it's, it's, I was, yeah, never thought of seeing, I was able to see him yeah. play against the Sonics one time. My stepdad had tickets and I got to see, I was like, my jaw dropped. I mean, it was just incredible, you yeah. know? Um, Maybe young kids don't know, but like it was, it was just an era. Yeah. And and what I loved about Jordan is that he prevented epic guys from getting a title. Yeah. Epic guys. He shut it down. And he right. But it, number my one that's my one A. My one B is Kobe. Yeah. Because just the like fearless. Yeah. He was fearless. Like he was like no, and you knew it. Like <laughs> the ultimate the competitor. Right. Like, ultimate competitor. I just love high competitive people that will that will put it on the line all the time and tell you what they're gonna do and right. they do it. Phil, my I man. appreciate that, bro. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why. All my life, I been grinding all my life, yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why. All my life, I been grinding all my life. Para mais vídeos assim, deixe o seu like e se inscreva no canal Vini Wizard, o bodybuilding traduzido de graça para você. Oh, wow.